Okay, I'm going to share my screen um, and uh, we'll get started. We have some slides to share and um, we're also going to be going to um, a couple different sites live. Can everybody see my screen now? Yes, we do see it, Raquel. Okay, great. Thank you. So I'm going to go to present mode. Uh, so welcome everybody. It's great to be here with you all uh, this morning. Um, this is the OUSD K8 FOSS webinar. We're going to be uh, talking about FOSS web. Uh, so we'll get started. Um, your, there's a lot of people that are helping out with this, but um, the main facilitators for this are myself, Raquel Rodriguez-Jones, and my email is up there, raquelljones at OUSD.org. I am one of the STEM coordinators for K5. Um, Herbie, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Herberta Zueda. I'm the secondary science coordinator supporting middle school. So if you have any middle school questions, um, you can reach me at my email up top. And we also have Jess, Jess Pentros um, on the line as well. She's from FOSS. Uh, Jess, do you want to say anything? Hi, I'm here to answer all the FOSS questions. I just answered the first one in the chat. Yes, you can link to Google in Google Classroom and there's the info and then they'll probably even talk about it today. Yeah. And then I uh, want to thank Kelleth for being in the meeting with us and supporting us with tech and Sarah Pipping, who is also part of the OUSD STEM team. She's in also supporting. Um, so thanks everybody and we'll get started. So uh, just for norms, um, the first one that we want to uh, just uh, point out today is the presumed positive intent. Um, we, um, and just to kind of point out that in this new context that we find ourselves in with the school closures and COVID-19, um, we are definitely coming at this um, in a learner's stance. Um, there's a lot of tech involved that is new to some of us, newer to some of us than others maybe. Um, but I am definitely a learner um, around the tech uh, that we are using. And to just also point out that we're, um, I imagine most of us are, are at home and we're uh, attending this from our homes and we have things going on at home like kids and families and dogs and pets. Uh, so I just wanna apologize now if my dog starts barking and I need to tell him to be quiet, that's a possibility. Um, uh, as part of that, um, please keep yourself on mute uh, unless there is something that you want to share. Uh, but and also to use that chat space and the question and answer space first uh, when there is something that you want to ask or you have something that you want to share with the group. Those would be your first two places to go to. Um, so uh, with those norms in mind, we'll continue. Uh, what we hope that everybody walks away with today is um, a better understanding of the resources that teachers and students uh, can use during uh, school closures and distance learning. So that's what we're aiming for today. And just a, a brief overview of what we're going to be doing today, um, the welcome and intro. Uh, we're going to move into uh, the teacher facing resources uh, that FOSWeb offers and we're going to go very quickly into logging on in case there is um, anyone in the group that has not yet, lo yet logged on to FOSWeb. We're going to review that very quickly and then we're going to go into navigating the resources um, that are more teacher facing and then we'll move into more of the student facing resources and we hope that there will be time at the end for questions. Um, if anyone has a question that is not being answered uh, through the question and answer space. And um, just as a framing, um, we don't expect um, that um, we are recreating our classrooms um, through distance learning. Uh, we just want um, all of us, all of you to try to best, try your best to keep science in your students' lives. Um, that's actually taken from one of the FOSS um, documents and it's um, what we really hope to see happening um, in this new time that uh, we're just keeping science alive for our students and families. That's our hope. Okay, so we're going to start with navigating teacher resources um, and we're going to start with logging on and to do that 
Um, I'm going to go um, to a website. Oops, let's see if I, I can get there. Um, by moving, I need to move something over. Where is it? Okay, there we go. So we really are um, urging everybody um, to, when you're um, planning distance learning, to start with Teacher Central. Uh, that has any and everything um, that an OUS teacher probably might want um, in this new context of distance learning. So we encourage everybody to start there. Um, and we're gonna talk about logging in and the best place to go get information to log in is down here at the bottom or at the middle of the page is the OUSD Science website link. If you click on that, it takes you to the OUSD Science website. Lots of great resources here for distance learning, um, the distance learning flipbook, codes for Google Classrooms that are already up and running for um, elementary, middle, and high school. And then down here at the bottom, there's information about uh, FOSS and COVID-19. But for logging in, what we want you to be able to do is to go to up here, this bar, TK8 FOSS, and you want to click on NGSS FOSS. And from here uh, at the middle of the page is a link to get immediate online access to NGSS FOSS. And when you click on that, you get these directions that pop out um, that you would follow to log in for the first time if you haven't already done this. Um, log in and register to FOSS Web and, and populate your teacher page with the modules that you want to work with. So that is there for you to use if you have not yet uh, logged in. Um, and that would be something that if you still need to do, you could do after this webinar. Uh, there really isn't time to do that right now, but um, if you follow these directions, we've tried this many, many times, it should work. If you have any problems, you can always reach out to Herb, to Herberta or to me, and we will help you with this process. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about logging in, we want to talk about the resources that FOSWeb offers uh, for distance learning. So we're going to go back to Teacher Central. And there's lots of different ways to get to FOSWeb. Um, one of the ways is up here in this distance learning area for teachers. If you click on that and you scroll down, you'll see FOSS here. Click on that. And again, there's some resources here that you can get to immediately around FOSS, uh, using FOSS. But what we want to do is go directly to FOSS Web. And this is the first page that you see when you go to FOSS Web. And here's where you sign in. Um, so um, after you've logged in and registered, you click on this to get to the FOSS Web page. And this takes you to your teacher page. Um, and because I support multiple schools, um, I have a lot on my teacher page. Um, so, but right now we're kind of gonna ignore that. And I want to point out right up here are under important notices is um, teaching and learning with FOSS during COVID-19 school closures. We're gonna spend some time just looking at these resources. Um, so if you click on the COVID-19 updates page, this is gonna take you to, um, what has been most recently added to FOSWeb to uh, support teachers and families and students during school closures. And there's a lot on this page uh, and it is updated uh, regularly. So you're gonna wanna check back occasionally and see what's here. Uh, a brief overview of what's on this page. There is here the Homeschool Connection Center. We're gonna go to that in just a moment. But there's also some um, other resources and every out, every day outside challenge. There is a downloadable guide, a support document for Google Classrooms, and a five day lesson plan for teaching um, the science of COVID-19 down here. And we're gonna go into each one of those uh, briefly. So we're gonna start with the Homeschool Connection Center. When you click on that, what you come to is this center where you can now access um, uh, all the different uh, modules that you uh, would have been teaching or are teaching uh, during this time. And up here at the top, the 6.8 and the K5 are the NGSS editions, and this is what we would be using in OUSD. 
Um, very briefly, just to kind of show you a little bit about what's here. Let's say that you're a fifth grade teacher and you are teaching mixtures and solutions. Raquel, before you leave that page, I just want to mention those are also available to families who visit that page. So those are public facing and um, for the middle school teachers, after you're logged in and go to the homeschool connection page, you'll have some additional content. So just a heads up, if you're at this page that looks like this, you're seeing like a general resource and then there's more specifics for the middle school. Yeah, and we're gonna go into that uh, just really briefly. So let's say that you're fifth grade and you want to look at the homeschool connections for mixtures and solutions. This, when you click on that module, this is what you'll see. So you have these two purple bars here. This under this first bar are the resources that have been added since school closures. So these are specifically um, around um, teaching science um, since the school since schools have been closed. And you can see that there's four weeks of resources here. Um, this first week is bilingual English and Spanish. I am assuming that Spanish is coming soon, as it says here. Um, but just to click into one of these, um, these in the elementary level always start with this cover page, has information for teachers, students, and families about how to access these materials, um, some tech support if needed. And then you see this week one, a investigation, separating mixtures, things that students could be, do, could be doing um, with their families, with or without their families at fifth grade, of course. Um, around uh, in teach or science investigations at home. And there are a couple of different um, options here, different investigations that you could be um, assigning to students or asking students and families to, um, to do. Um, and what we wanna say about this is that um, you know your teacher, your students best, um, and you know where you were when the schools closed. Um, these are not meant specifically to sort of like be a sign for like a whole week's of worth of learning, like, um, you know, first do investigation A, then B, then C, then D, or whatever might be in this home module. Um, we hope that what teachers are doing is going in, thinking about um, their families and their students and what those, what their context is, and thinking about what is best for their, for their students to be working on right now. So, you know, you can pick and choose what you want your students to be doing at home. Um, and you can even pick and choose like how you're supporting that. We're gonna get into that in just a moment. But again, this is not meant to sort of just be like, okay, now do all four investigations. Um, you, can, you can choose the ones that you think would best be best for your students. And um, so going back, you can see that um, there's four weeks of materials here that you can choose from. Um, if you go below this purple bar, what you see are the traditional homeschool connection PDFs that um, would have been available or and are available at any time, even now. Um, but these might be what you would have sent home after doing a lesson in class that you wanted families and students to, to do after doing, after doing something in the classroom and getting more support. Uh, so these um, are not meant uh, to be sort of like um, without more teacher support. So just to keep that in mind. Um, and Jess, if, that, if that's not correct or you want to say something about that, please um, jump in. Okay. Uh, so we're going to move on. Um, Something else um, on this, I'm going back to this COVID-19 updates page. Um, that um, Raquel, can you actually go back to the, um, where it has all the, the tiles there for? Um, yes, uh, that page? Yeah, and so I just wanted to point out middle school. So if you can click on diversity of life. Yes, thank you, Herbie. Uh, there we go. So for middle school, it's a little bit different in the sense of how things are laid out. In elementary, it was laid out week by week. But if, um, if you can go ahead, Raquel, and click on English. This one right here? Mm -hmm. So again, this looks very similar to what Raquel showed for elementary, uh, the front-facing front letter. All the modules will have this letter uh, up top. 
Then as you get into page two, um, you'll see the, um, you'll see uh, resources that students can um, utilize at home and suggested projects. Scroll down a little bit more. Um, at the bottom of that page, you saw at, at home, um, other at home active opportunities. So um, this right here is again, uh, what has come out of uh, the extensions from uh, what you would see in the module normally, but has put in here. And again, there are various um, opportunities uh, and levels for students to engage um, tech free or with tech um, so they can utilize here. If you can go back to, um, and, and just uh, talked about this earlier, if you were to log into this as a teacher, um, the difference on this page, Raquel, can you scroll up a little bit? Yep. You see how there's purple um, uh, lining there? There would be more instructions as to how to engage with your students um, if you were engaging with your students on a, um, uh, a weekly basis via technology, um, there would be more instructions and, um, and uh, links to uh, the notebook pages and or pages for students to read um, if we were in the teacher, uh, if we logged in as a teacher. Yeah, and so what we did is we basically went through every single one of the middle school courses and looked through the investigations to find which parts could be done at home um, through distance learning. A lot of it, the hands-on stuff would not translate as well um, unless you took home the entire kit and are doing video lessons every day, which if you are, good luck. <laughs> so, um, so we looked for those pieces where you could assign a multimedia and a notebook sheet or a reading and a notebook sheet and those sort of things. And I think that with Google Classroom, um, you can have some really rich discussions with middle school students. You can actually maintain a little bit of that feel of we're doing this together, even though everybody is kind of doing it apart. So there are more resources there for teachers. Thank you. Raquel, you can go ahead and continue. Okay, great. Thank you, Herbie. Um, so we're going back to uh, the COVID-19 updates page and we're gonna uh, look at some more resources here. So we wanna point out um, here, there's an everyday outside challenge for both elementary and for middle school. Uh, we know that our students right now are spending probably a lot of time in front of screens. Um, and so this is just a really great resource that I have, has come out since school closures that FOSS has put together. Um, a way to get your students um, outdoors maybe um, for up to 30 minutes a day. There are some very simple to implement um, ways to bring science outside. Um, so this would be something that you might want to uh, share with your families and your students challenge them to spend some time outdoors every single day um, away from their screens and, and still do science. Um, so these are really nice ways to do that. And the elementary and the middle school pages look very similar. Um, so just looking at this is the middle school one, but they both are have very similar content. Um, I just wanted to add that if folks are thinking like, um, and, and maybe more towards middle school, if they wanted to add maybe a bit more rigor to this, um, to having students going outside, they can have their students uh, observe the world around them through the lens of a cross-cutting concept or engaging with the practices. That's one way um, for our students to, um, or and teachers feel like we're still connected to NGSS. And I think that would be a wonderful opportunity for them. I'll go ahead and link some resources into the chat now. Herbie, are you still there? <laughs> You go ahead, keep going. Okay. okay, I lost you for a second. Okay, so that's that resource. Um, we want to go back to the updates page and we're going to continue a little bit of a little bit of time here. Um, I want to point out um, this downloadable guide down here. Um, when you click on that, this is a great resource. Um, there's a note to administrators here, um, but it's a great resource for uh, administrators and teachers. Um, I really appreciate the thinking that's gone into this document because we know that um, our students and, our, and their families are in, um, there's lots of different contexts and situations that are 
that they're experiencing right now. So this gives you some more information and resources around um, bringing science to your students in different ways. So if you have uh, families that have limited technology, um, and we know that there's a lot of those families out there, then maybe you're um, sending home packets um, or you're looking at um, bringing science to them, but with limited technology, maybe there's some things that they're doing on smartphones, but, uh, but they don't have a, 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 a Wi-Fi or a computer or something like that. So that might be an option A. Option B is um, continuing with some digital assignments um, and um, using FOSS that, that way. And then option C is like the most traditional way of teaching science where there's like a, a daily online lesson or instruction. Um, so as a teacher, you get to think about how it is you're bringing science to your students and their families and deciding which of these options is best for you. So then there's um, more information below, depending on the, the option that you choose or options, maybe it's different for different families in your class. So this is just, uh, I really appreciate the thinking that went into this and a way to, to support teachers and administrators in continuing to do science with families um, in this context. So then we come back to the updates page. After the downloadable guide, there is this support document um, if you are using Google Classrooms uh, and you want to be able to uh, bring some of that FOSS web, um, FOSS materials and load them onto your Google Classroom. This document has um, directions and steps to support you in doing that. So again, this is um, something that you can come back and take a look at if this applies to you. Back to the updates page. Uh, so one of the last things that I want to point out on this page is this really great um, update here. This is a five-day lesson plan in English and Spanish about the science of COVID-19. So um, considering what it is we're all going through right now around the world, there is a lot of science going on that uh, we could and should be talking about. So uh, here's one way of doing that. So this is a five-day lesson plan that FOSS put together um, around the science of COVID-19. And there are topics such as what is a virus? How is it spread in humans? Um, what is exponential growth? Um, so these are things that are happening right now that your students might even be wondering about or talking about in their families. Um, so here's this resource that you have uh, different ways of bringing to your students um, to bring this to life for them. And um, this was put on, I guess, a couple of weeks ago. There, um, FOSS is planning on bringing in another five-day lesson plan towards the end of April, first week of May. Um, my understanding it's going to be more around like the, the medicine or the vaccines and some other topics, but still all about COVID-19. Um, so know that this is a resource that is also available on that, um, this updates page that you could be sharing with your families and their um, and students and families. Okay. Um, just really quickly, um, uh, Jess already mentioned this, but if you come back um, to, um, let's see, I want to come back to this page here. This is the, where we started with FOSSWeb. Um, there is a way that families can get into the Homeschool Connection Center without logging in, and it's right here, um, right above where we normally log in. If families come to that page and they, they log in, then here are those Homeschool Connection resources that they can then get to. Um, so this is something that you can share with families um, so that and, and they just they don't log in. They don't have all of the same features that you do as a teacher, um, but the homeschool connections are available to them. And then something else I want to point out on this FOSS web page. Um, let's say that you're 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 getting into this and you you have a problem or a question and you would like some help. Um, you could reach out to Herberta or I as your OUSD STEM support uh, coordinators, um, but sometimes you might want to 
go directly to FOSS and ask them questions. There is a contact us link down here that you can get to from this startup page. And here um, are some great resources. So there are some self-help resources. This is a library of tutorial videos, step-by-step -step walkthroughs and fact pages. Um, you're trying something new and you want to have a walkthrough um, before you do it. Come here. There's lots of resources in this library that you can go to. But let's say that you have a question and it's not being answered. Um, if you need immediate help, there are um, phone numbers and that you can call and get a hold of somebody right away. There's also a way that you can email uh, FOSS and let them know what your question is by filling out this form. Um, before the school closures, the um, when I or teachers that I knew would use this resource of emailing FOSS, they would get oftentimes, most often, responses within a day um, so that your, your questions were answered very quickly. Um, since school closures, I don't know if this is, um, if they're getting so many questions that maybe this has slowed down a bit, but I do know that um, FOSS um, has great customer service and their, um, you know, their, uh, their intent is to get back to teachers as soon as possible uh, to answer any and all questions. Um, Jess, was there anything you wanted to say about um, contacting FOSS? I think you covered it, thank you. Okay, fantastic. Um, Herbie, was there something else? Let's see. I think from here we go back to our PowerPoint and uh, we, oops, let's see, where are we? Oh, one other thing. Um, if you're having um, a problem and um, it's um, something like, let's say that um, you're having, a, and I, I, and it's more of an OUSD issue. Um, maybe you're not seeing all of your students on your um, class page or something like that. Then um, if you have, if you want to reach out to um, get some support from OUSD, you would email um, helpdesk at OUSD.org and um, they would um, then like send your question to the correct department and answer your questions. And Kellith, if I just said something incorrect, please correct my, correct me. Um, but I think that's how that works. That's absolutely correct, Raquel. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay. Um, we would like to pause here for a moment and um, let teachers, um, let you all talk about um, what you've seen. There's, this has been a lot of information. Um, talk amongst yourselves about what you've seen and some questions, just a kind of prompt discussion might be, what do you think you will use um, of the resources that you've just been introduced to? Or what new ideas do you have for engaging students and families at home? Um, and we're going to open up uh, two different Zoom meetings for this. One is for elementary K-5. The other is for six, eight teachers. Um, and um, the, let's see, uh, I'm gonna put the link for the elementary um, Zoom into chat. It's this one here. Um, Secondary, I already put the link in. Okay. And let's see. I think I need to stop sharing, Kellith. Is that correct? Oh, no. Up here. Uh, chat. Where's my little chat box? There we go. So this is the link uh, to that Zoom meeting for elementary K-5 teachers. There you go. And um, about 10 minutes, does that sound about good, Roberta? Yes. Okay. So if you would join Herbie, Herberta's going to go to the middle school Zoom meeting. I'm going to join the elementary school uh, meeting, and um, we can meet there and have some discussions about what we've seen. So just to clarify, you'll be leaving this webinar and going to a different Zoom meeting, and then uh, I believe we'll be returning back to this webinar uh, when that when those breakout sessions are finished. Yeah, cool. that's our intent. Kellith, are you staying here in this meeting? I'll stay here. Okay, great. 
Okay, see, we'll see you in a, in a minute in the, in the Zoom meetings, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think you'll need you'll need to. Um, oh, there she goes. So anybody that's still here, um, you can break out into. Let's see the. Um, the elementary or the secondary Zoom meetings. And those links are in the chat. So just make sure that you copy those links before you leave the meeting. And then you'll leave this meeting and then go over to those Zoom meetings. Hi, Connie, if you have a question, can you type it into the chat so it can figure out what you need? Okay, so that is, uh, do you see there's a, um, up in the chat, Connie, there's a, um, there's a link that says elementary. Let me see if I can put it back in here. If you just got in. There we go. Thank you, Sarah. It also looks, Kellis, like yeah. we have we have some attendees staying with us, which is yeah. totally fine. If um, although you can go to the open Zoom meetings with Raquel or Herberta, which allows you to actually talk um, with them and verbalize any questions or share any insight you have about using FOSS with your students while we are in school closures. But um, we can continue to field questions as best we can, Kellis and I, um, if you remain here for this time. One I see in the Q and A, Kellith, which I'm not sure if um, how can we show our teachers what a student sees when they log in um, through Clever. Is there a way to to mimic that to show that interface? Sure, I can share my screen now. We could actually do that now. So let me just uh, I'll go into screen sharing mode. So give me just a second. Okay, so right now this is my screen right now. So this is not something that you're necessarily able to do, but let's just say that we're going to uh, we're going to visit student in Garfield, just see what the experience is like. I think that's always a good thing to do. So I'm just going to access one of the students' portals here. So let's see what happens here. So we've got, this is what the Clever experience looks like for students. When the student clicks on FOSS, then there's one more click necessary. Log in with Clever. Just takes a moment and then this is what students see here. So this can be a little bit confusing. One question that, that I've gotten, just that an email that I saw, Sarah, I saw uh, a teacher ask if we can, uh, if there's a way to eliminate uh, the modules or the titles that students don't need to see. I think that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that right now, but I think that's something that I'd like to find out about. So this looks like this is a three, five combo class. And let's see. I believe as an environment falls within that. And then we have got different, we've got the books, we've got the homeschool connection that Raquel was talking about, websites, we've got videos, ebook is here. 
So it actually looks pretty similar. The, the interface looks pretty similar to the teacher interface. And Jess um, from Boss could probably answer this better, but I believe when you, on your teacher facing side, actually assign something, Mm -hmm. um, it might show up a little bit differently to the student. Um, it might alert them to that actual assignment. So here are just things students can go on and pull up at any time, play around with. But if you actually assign something through FOSS Web, I think it alerts the student somehow on this interface, which we're not seeing right now, but um, mm -hmm. does give you a, a sense, like Kellett said, looks really similar to the teacher, but doesn't obviously have all of your teaching, teaching support um, that you would have on your FOSS Web account. Any okay. other questions about that? Yeah, I hope that answered um, the question that was put in the chat. And um, you can put more questions in the chat and we'll, we'll answer them as we wait for our colleagues to return uh, after their breakout. You can also use the chat to share what has been working for you. Perhaps you have been playing around with FOSS Web. Um, so the chat's a great place to put things that's been working for you and questions you want answered, you would use the Q&A feature for that. Connie, I saw you question, you asked a question is this, what was on the link on the FOSS site? I'm not sure what, I'm not sure about your, your question, what you mean. Maybe you can elaborate just a little bit more. This is what, why I think Sarah, this would, it would be a good time to, uh, to switch over to meetings instead of webinars now, now that we have less people. One of yeah. the reasons we switched over to, to webinars I says because we had so many people and we had a limit of 300 and in the early days we were we were going over 300 a lot so people couldn't get in and this was the only way we could accommodate everyone but it seems like things have kind of settled down a little bit so I think this would be a good time to shift back to meetings cannot get into the breakout zoom meeting I kept keep getting told to join as an attendee but when I click on it takes me back to this meeting. So I'm not sure if you've got the right link there, Lorraine, which one were you trying to get into, Lorraine, the elementary or the secondary? That would be elementary, I believe. Okay. So let's see, where is that? Um, we heard, thanks for sharing, Kimberly. I'm just gonna call it out in the chat that she's been assigning reading from the text um probably from the digital text and that providing a link to that digital book has been working really well for her uh, students so thanks for sharing that um what else are we seeing oh secondary lorraine let's see i'll get that for you oh secondary sorry lorraine wanted to go to to secondary But yeah, something we're learning about um, Zoom, uh, like Kelleth was saying, webinars benefit, can host more people, but downside is uh, limited ways to interact um, verbally um, beyond the chatting. So please take advantage of that to share uh, your questions uh, or what's been working for you in um, promoting science at home for your students. Uh, so we have a great qu question from Kimberly. Uh, what kind of assignments can be assigned? Roberta, would you want to respond to that? Um, yeah, and I can I share my screen? Oh, hold on. Okay, so um, let's get my sharing screen up. Okay, so if you were to um, 
and this is in the agenda. I know it's really small right here on my um, screen, but if you were to log into FOSS and make sure you're not logged in as a student, if you were to use it, these uh, particular um, login information, you would see all of these um, modules. And that's just because I have it up for this purpose. Um, depending on what you as a teacher has assigned, that would change. But um, students, if you clicked on, let's say, diversity of life, um, you would see all the multimedia, all the uh, media library, and the homeschool connections, which Raquel was using as the, the, the grounding document that we were referring back to. Um, if you wanted to assign uh, work, to a student, um, the link to assigning content to classes is right here. It's really cool um, when you go into um, like a module and you would see uh, these, um, oi, oi, oi. Um, you would see all the multimedia listed. Um, as a teacher, it would have these little green and red um, symbols here on the side that's saying all or zero, or, um, zero meaning so you can assign it to a particular student. I think that's a really cool option. I think teachers should just put the all so all your students could see it instead of um, trying to um, fiddle faddle with individual students. If that makes sense. Is there a way, Herberta, for you for you to to show us how to do that from the t as we're waiting just for people to come back, like from a teacher page? What does that look like? It sounds really clear the way you describe it, but just being the visual person I am. I'm not sure since you don't have students, but I know you might have one open that where some teachers are students in one of your FOSS classes. Um, where teachers are students? Would you want me to log in and assign? Yeah, like could you actually show us how you would assign it if you were logged into the teacher side? Let me go ahead and log in. I'm logging in. Um, password. Just kidding. I swear I know how to spell my name. Okay, so if I, um, this would be my landing page for um, after I log in. And if I go to my classes that I've already set up. And the video will um, help you set up a class, but you can or just add a class here and um, click. Now, if I wanted to, um, let's say, let's go to weather and climate. Um, I'm going to um, look at, this is my landing page here. And um, if I wanna look at the assignments, I have all my assignments listed here and oh goodness um, oh I'm not seeing it right now I apologize we got Jess here too that um, can chime in Hey Jess, we were just, a teacher had a question about all the different kinds of assignments you can make um, and give to students via FOSWeb. So we've got multimedia, you can assign assessments. Mm. Um, and so we were just looking at the teacher facing side of that, of how you assign. And uh, Herberta pointed out the video that can be watched that helps you show you um, how to assign um, assignments. <laughs> Did that you video? Yeah. Or I got to my teacher login page in my classroom, and then I got lost in the documents for a second. And the question actually just came up in K-5, if you're the sort of science specialist who's got students who are in multiple different classes, but they're not all linked to your FOSWeb account, then you wouldn't be able to assign content to those students in that way. But that should be a district rostering thing. Um, and so Raquel said to send that info to Kellis and you can try to get access to those. It looks like we're waiting as our 
breakout counterparts are coming back to our larger webinar space. They're just waiting as people are coming back in. Okay, now I know where I went wrong. I'm gonna share my screen again. Just needed a minute. Okay. Modeling perseverance. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let me go ahead and bring this down. So here's the green things that I was talking about. So um, here are, so go back to my landing page and I went ahead and minimized this because that's just a bunch of stuff I don't want to see right now, but I went ahead and added a class. So these are my classes in blue and right here in this blue line, that's where it says assign content. So I want to go ahead and assign content and here's the various modules that I want to um, go towards. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just click on living systems. The first one there. And here is um, where I can assign. So right now it says all, so that's all my students, or I can click and say none, and I can go ahead and assign the individual um, students that way. And then you just toggle back and forth. And then if I go back, So manage class pages. Whoops, just kidding. Um, so manage students. I only have one student. Um, if I want to upload students or assign um, the content or add notes and manage my page, that's the way I would do it here. I'm, I'm not sure if our element, oh, elementary is coming back. So I think everybody's back. Um, so we can close out the webinar. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and just um, finish up our slides um, that we wanted to share. And I will share my screen. Um, as, as we were in our breakout, um, we had, um, um, we're talking about some student resources and I'll just do this briefly. Um, I want to get some announcements. So as students log in um, to FOSS, um, again, this is if you are, um, your students have technology and you are utilizing it, or Google Classroom or whatever platform you're using, um, to connect with your students. Um, so students would log in through Clever just as they would uh, normally, um, single sign-on. Um, and if they have a Chromebook, it should be just the same as they have um, done before. Um, if you wanted to see what student um, resources look like, here's um, some login information. Uh, please make sure that you've logged out as a teacher so you can log in as a student and see what students uh, see, all the various resources. Um, and I just took a screenshot of this is what um, students would see from my page that I had set up for this webinar. And if we clicked on any of the modules and I say diversity of life, here are all the various um, resources that are available to them, the multimedia, the, the media library, and the homeschool connections, which is uh, what um, Raquel already was um, showing us earlier um, and was using as a landing page for us in our beginning of our uh, webinar. Um, and they all start with a, a letter as well if you click in further. Um, how to assign work. If you go to um, any of the, um, uh, walkthrough videos which are linked onto our agenda 
you can um, watch a video. And we don't have time to uh, go ahead and watch that video, but um, on your own time, you can go ahead and watch it and see how to assign um, um, uh, material to your students that way. Um, I'm gonna pause now and stop sharing. And is there any questions that folks want to ask? And I will actually link the agenda again to our um, anyone has questions. Okay, well, I don't see any yet, but it's okay. Um, I'll go ahead and continue to screen um, uh, share. So um, here's the agenda, just so you know, um, the various resources that we have um, provided and we talked about. Um, so updates and announcements. Um, the annual science teacher survey is coming out soon. Um, so be looking for that. We have a STEM at home challenge coming soon. Um, and I will pause here and let Sarah Fipping uh, discuss that further. Yeah, so Herbs, if you can go to our OUSD science website, even modeling from Teacher Central, how to get there again. Um, so STEM at home slash OSEF, which now is standing for OUSD Science and Engineering Fair. We're trying to compete with the International Science and Engineering Fair, which is called ICEF, and our local county fair, which is ASEF, Alameda County Science and Engineering Fair. So right there. Um, so we have our OSEF at home challenge. If you click, go to our website and click right there from the home page. Click here to participate, Herbs, right? At the, mm -hmm. Um, we are releasing challenges that your students can participate in to warm up to potentially participate in our virtual science fair. So if that's something you normally do when we're in school or something you want to challenge yourself and your students with this year, um, the FOSS at home are a great uh, are our go-to resources for assigning content for science and those can really spark inquiry and curiosity. So you can be encouraging your students through the FOSS at home assignments to jot down their questions, things that come up, because then they can take that question um, and participate in our virtual science fair, which will be the you know second to last week before school gets out with more information coming about how to participate in that. But you can also, if you scroll down, Herberta, we'll have weekly themes. And um, this week's theme is Earth Day is Every Day. Uh, so there are some particular highlighted challenges a student could take, for, um, take part in uh, and submit their work via Instagram or Google form or just to you. And we're reaching out to our partners to get prizes and encourage students. But really the goal of this, which is why FOSS at home assignments that you're having students do and sharing with them, the goal is to generate questions that students can investigate their own question or do their own engineering project at home. Um, with their family and participate in our virtual science fair. So just wanted to highlight that resource, uh, something we're trying out and we'd love you to be a part of it, your students to be a part of it and get your feedback and build our community uh, around uh, science and engineering. So thanks for highlighting that. Thank you. Um, back to our um, agenda here, our slides here. Um, and as we've been modeling, uh, Teacher Central is your one shop, a one-stop shop for everything. So please go there um, for more virtual trainings and other resources. Um, one thing I wanted to note as a secondary science coordinator, um, end of the year inventory checklist. This is just so um, uh, teachers uh, at the middle school, this boss is first year for us. This is exciting. Um, so this uh, checklist here is just um, for you to think about how you're going to store the resources that are um, now site responsible, such as the investigation guides. That's the, pur the large purple spiral that stays at your site. The um, uh, student resource books and um, the other um, student uh, teacher resource uh, materials. So you want to keep those at your site. Uh, we have a material inventory sheet for 
you to um, uh, think about as you are um, how you're storing, where to store them, um, when, when do they come out um, of storage. Um, so that's for um, middle school. And we just want to note that elementary schools, um, your current kits are the kits that you're going to be, be, um, be starting with in, um, in the fall, um, as we will not be able to um, pick up those kits. Um, but we will um, have a plan to support um, uh, the need to replenish any materials that are uh, needed. So any questions on that? Yes, we have no more questions. Um, Kellef, uh, I think Raquel is still on. Uh, Jess, uh, Sarah, is there anything else we'd like to add? Just want to say thank you to everyone for participating today. And panelists, you did a great job presenting. Somehow we lost Raquel. Um, I don't know if she's, oh, it looks like she's still, uh, she, she's there as an attendee and uh, but Raquel, you did a great job. Sorry that we lost you there. But uh, thank you, um, everyone. And be sure to to reach out to us. You can um, you can reach out to to any of us via email if you have any questions about FOSS. And uh, we're just about at the end there. So panelists, we can stay on just for a moment. And if anyone else has any questions, you can stay on. But I think we're going to go ahead and officially end right now. So if you've got something else you need to do. Uh, remember to stay safe, stay, stay healthy, and have a great day today. Bye, everybody. Bye. I just want to say you teachers are doing a great job. My daughter loves seeing her teacher online, and it means a lot. Thank you. <laughs>